In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to colour in the deck chair dreaming stamp, which is obviously the one that you can see in front of you. Now I've coloured this in using Pro Markers and I've stamped the image on watercolour paper. I've only just started doing this because I, I originally used to think that watercolour paper probably wouldn't be any good with the Pro Markers, but I've been so surprised and so impressed with how well the Pro Markers work when you use it on watercolour paper. The colours blend really well together, but they don't seem to bleed over the edges half as much. You can put down a lot of ink without the ink bleeding and um, I th really would recommend that you try stamping on watercolour paper if you are using the Pro Markers because I think you'll be as impressed as me with the results. Right, so first of all what I'm going to do is show you what you need if you want to do this project. Now these are the Pro Marker colours that I've used and then I've used a Memento ink pad in Rich Cocoa which is a really nice brown and gives a bit of a softer effect than using the black ink all the time. And then this is the watercolour paper pad that I've used. It's a Dale O'Rowney one and the pad is actually called the Langton. And the weight of the paper is £140 which almost makes it like a card. It's a really nice solid, solid weight of paper to use. Right, so I'll just let you watch that and have a quick look while I just get ready. Now what I'm going to do, first of all I'll just put down a scrap piece of paper so that your ink doesn't bleed on anything valuable. And then I've stamped my image already and I'm going to start colouring them in. Now I'm going to use vanilla first, which is the palest colour for the bear. And I'm going to colour in the top of his ear and then the top half of his head. And as usual, when I'm using the Pro Markers, I'm going to go over and over and over in that so that it's all really nice and flooded and you get a really nice smooth, even colour. So that's the top of his head done. Now I'm going to get the other colour that I need, which is honeycomb. Now when you first put this down, it's quite scary and you'll probably end up thinking there's no way these two colours are going to work together. But trust me, they really do. If you just keep on blending, and just follow what I do. You'll be quite surprised at how well and how easy it is to get a really professional looking result. So I put that down. Now I'm going to get my vanilla again. And I'm going to go over the join where the colours meet. But then to tone down the dark colour, I'm also taking the vanilla into the darker colour. Which blends it and tones it down. Now it might look a bit patchy while you're doing it, but don't worry because it all sort of always seems to just bleed together and makes it look really nice. And then I'm going to get the honeycomb again and put that down again. But this time I'm not going up as far as I did the first time. And then the vanilla again. And again just blend the join. And that's his face done. Put more down there like that. Next I'm going to do the top of his ear with vanilla and then I'm going to do the top of each of his paws. Do that one and then this one again. Make sure I go over and over flooding the area with the colour so it's nice and smooth. And then the honeycomb again on the bottom bit of his ear and then on the bottom half of each of his paws that bit in as well, like that. And then the vanilla again and blend the join going down into the honeycomb just to make it a little bit paler. Like that, do the other. And then keep the vanilla and I'm going to do the top of his foot and along the top of his leg, like that. And then the last bit, get the honeycomb again and colour in his tummy and then the underside of his leg. And then just blend down again so that it creates a nice shaded effect. Just a tiny bit more there. And then for the bottom of his feet, I'm going to do the vanilla to keep them nice and pale. 
that is your little bear just about finished. So now I'm going to do the deck chair and I'm colouring this in using caramel which is quite a nice brown. It's when you're colouring in thin areas like this that you really appreciate the watercolour paper because if you're doing it on a smooth paper when you're trying to colour something in quite thin with quite a dark pen that's when you notice the bleeding but when you're doing it on the watercolour paper it really does seem to hold on to the ink a lot more so you get far less bleeding and far less overlap than you would on other papers. And that's the deck chair done. While I've got the brown, I'll just colour in the little dots on his feet and his nose, like that. And then I'll just colour his deck chair in. And this time for the deck chair I'm using pastel blue. And again, I'm just going to run a thin line down for each of the stripes. And then, to make sure the picture doesn't get too full of too many different colours, I'm also going to use the pastel blue for the shadow under his chair. When I'm colouring in images, I do always try and make sure that I don't use more than, say, two or three main colours because then it keeps your image nice and simple and pulls everything together. So that's the shadow and then I'm just going to put a thin line down the edge of his glass there for a bit of shading and to colour in the rest of the glass. I'll use the vanilla again to give him a little bit of orange drink and I just need to add a little bit of shading on the newspaper with the pastel blue again and then there's just a little bird to do. So I'm using the pale pastel blue around his face. And then to finish him off in a slightly darker blue, I've got denim blue. I'll just colour the rest of them in with that. And that's it. That is your deck chair dreaming stamp, coloured in using your Pro markers.